Hi, it's Brian here from Niche Advice. Hope you're well. In this session, we're gonna talk about valuations and what's happening to the valuation market. So if you are a person who's looking to get a mortgage or is looking to do a remortgage, then this video is really uh, based for, for you. Um, and this is really, although it's not to do with mortgages specifically, I'm, I'm going to be talking about the process. Now that could be bridging finance. It could be secure loans. It could be uh, remortgages. It could be purchases. All of those things, there's one process in the middle, and that's the valuation survey process. And the coronavirus and its impact has had a massive impact on that specific process. Um, basically, following the government's announcement to only um, have critical staff going out and visiting properties and working, essentially, um, the surveyors uh, have now decided that they will not go out and visit properties. Um, and that's had a knock-on effect, and I've talked about this in other, other videos, but it's had a huge knock-on effect on the mortgage process because essentially um, high loan-to-value deals are um, relying on a surveyor going visiting the property and making sure that the asset is suitable for the lender to be able to lend on. So what's that done? Uh, that, that, that whole process, what has happened now is a lot of the lenders have either pulled out of the market or will do a desktop valuation, which is an online valuation. What that means is, um, for reassurance purposes, lenders want a, a lot more equity in the property, just in case there's a crackdown aside that we don't know about, or just in case there's some movement there that's gonna affect your property value. Um, just in case there are other issues with the property, they wanna have a cushion, and that's why they've reduced their loan to values. So let's look at some of the rules that have come in in the last week. Uh, so we initially had, and I, taught, I put a video up on this, we initially had when all this happened, Halifax, which is one of the biggest lenders in the country, um, decide that they were going to pull all their products to 60% loan to value, purchase and remortgage. Okay, so that gives, and that, that's sort of, um, that was a huge announcement by one of the biggest lenders. So as soon as that happened, we saw a lot of, uh, before Halifax, a lot of specialist lenders, uh, buy-to-let lenders, self-employed lenders, lenders that deal with adverse, they pulled a lot of their products. So they either reduced their loan to values to maybe 60% loan to value, or they reduced, they, they took out their products entirely. Now that was to do with other issues, whether it was funding issues, whether it was to do with logistically not being able to offer what they could. But if we stay to the mainstream lenders, Halifax did so last week. Um, and then we saw a number of lenders follow suit. Uh, we saw Coventry uh, Building Society came out and said, oh, no, 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 we'll take it up to 85% loan to value. So Halifax a couple of days before 60, Coventry have come out 85%, wonderful news. Everybody thought, great, let's start flooding Coventry with lots of business on buy to let on residential and so forth. <laughs> About 24 hours later, Coventry came out and said, oh, we're going we're gonna to limit all of this. If it's a flat, it'll be 50% loan to value. There'll be all sorts of restrictions around what they wanted to do. So anyway, they almost pulled away from it. They just had too much business. Um, it was then followed by lenders like um, Santander, who actually came out and said, look, we'll do it up to 75% loan to value. There is restrictions, you know, up to a loan amount of 350, for example. So... They were, they've, they've started moving towards the right direction. And then we had a few other lenders come out with sort of 75% loan to value. So some buy to let lenders out there, they've said that they will do 75% loan to value on normal buy to lets. However, one aspect of the properties that have been affected is HMOs with some that they still want physical value is on. Um, what I've seen is a lot of the you know, the Airbnb type products have been pulled, the short term let products have been pulled. Um, and specifically, a lot of new builds have been pulled as well. So people are not willing to do their stock valuations on new build because there is no historical data. OK, it's a new build property that they've got no sold records. They've got no rental records. They've got nothing really. So they're put, moving away. So if you're sitting on a new build property, you're looking to do a new build property now or a help to buy. Um, very, very hard to place those at the moment simply because of the restrictions around valuations and surveys and, 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 and the lenders following suit and pulling those type of products. OK, so there is a big difference between a house and a flat when it comes to valuations from the looks of it. Um, the, the automated systems can pick up more historical data and what you find is better. OK, so that's that's what some of the changes that have happened. So around buy to let, 
normal buy to lets, we still we still got lenders that will do 75% loan to values. If it's a little bit more adventurous, then you're going to struggle around that. Um, residential purposes, you know, you you got Barclays at 60% loan to value. I think um, uh, NatWest came at 60% loan to value. Uh, sorry, NatWest, I think is 80% loan to value. Um, so they're all sort of there. Halifax is, uh, funny enough, came back in yesterday. So last week they were as limited at 60% loan to value. Halifax have come in at 80% loan to value. So really good news, positive. Um, and and that, that's helped. And I think that will help the rest of the lenders have be a bit of reassurance. Although Halifax have got a good track record with this, I was aware that Halifax was doing desktop valuations for remortgages, which is quite common. A lot of lenders do desktop valuation on remortgages, but I was aware Halifax were doing it on some purchases as well. So they've got a track record and a system around this. So um, it, it's good It's good to know around that. Obviously, if it's a product transfer and they're still lending them through a higher loan to value. So product transfers seems to be not affected by all of these surveying rules because they're not sending out surveys on product transfers. Um, so lots of change, literally on a daily basis, we're getting changes and updates. You've got Accord who've come out with something quite good, which is 85% on remortgages. Um, um, and I think 70% on purchases. There are some restrictions around flats uh, and new bills they won't do. Um, there are a number of lenders that have said, look, we just will not do the buy to lets. We need physical valuations on buy to lets. Um, Spare a thought here for people, and if you're one of them, it's definitely worth giving me a call. If you're someone who's sitting on bridging finance right now, give me a call because you could potentially have a problem there in terms of an exit strategy. A lot of people have been getting bridging finance, development finance, I'm going to buy this house, three bedroom. They've been going to see all the gurus on, on, on YouTube telling them they're going to be property millionaires, and now they're sitting on bridging finance, and they need to exit this bridging finance. So what they've done is... They've maybe bought a property for a three bed property and they've converted into a five bed. And now they're sitting on expensive bridging finance and they need to exit out to um, a buy to let product, for example. Guys, if you're one of them, get in touch with us because time is running out. A lot of these lenders are wobbly. Their funding lines are wobbly. And they, 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 you know, they're not going to be around for that long, some of them. Okay, so it's, it's best we try to get that in there. And this is the topic. I've had lenders pull products multiple lenders now where the case is just about to get offered but their lender has pulled their entire range and they've said we're not honoring anything that's not been offered okay so i've got i've got clients right now that have been going through the whole painful process of getting documentation answering all sorts of questions and all of a sudden the lender said sorry we're not lending as of today as of today we're not lending anymore uh, and we're putting stock to anyone that's not been offered even of those guys that have been offered okay um, lenders are coming back with additional questions uh, by us or the solicitors in terms of um, sustainability of income. So mark my words, it's, it, things are going to get worse. So if you're on bridging finance, development finance, things like that, get in touch with us because time is running out for you guys. And, you, you know, those bridging lenders, they're not like your normal banks. They're private. They borrowed their money from somebody else if they're not their own lending their own money. And they are ruthless in regards to repossession. So you've just got to be mindful around that. Think about your exit strategy now. Come up with options now. Is there any other security we can secure things on? Can we refinance something else to pay these guys off? Because it's coming. And they, you know, they, they will not hesitate um, to ask for their money. Um, so yeah, that's about it really, guys. It's, it's all doom and gloom at the moment. But I'm just trying to keep you guys informed. Please do like and subscribe to our channel to get these updates. There is no sales pitch as this. It's literally, I'm telling you how it is and, and get in touch with me if you want to get more information. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker before applying. Niche Advice Limited is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.